Hi guys, welcome to the BB and J podcast. I'm your host today, Bridget. I know you're used to seeing John, but I'm taking over this week. Um, so I want to talk about today is video. And for me personally, I know I preach this to my clients. Video is the ultimate form of content. That is right. So everybody has access to video. You see it all the time. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. If you're not addicted to TikTok, um, good for you. <laughs> TikTok is a really big part of what I consume nowadays, especially since the pandemic started. And in addition to that, YouTube, Snapchat, all the video. And the beauty about video is that anybody can create it. As long as you have a phone, even if it's an older phone, you can still create video. And it doesn't take, um, it doesn't take a videographer or a cinematographer of any kind to produce very good content. And what we care about in the digital marketing world is, is value, education, and entertainment. Okay, so there are three reasons why video is the ultimate form of content and I'm gonna go over exactly why. So just to list the three and then I'm gonna go into depth. Um, the first being video gives in a lot of sensory input, okay? And I'm gonna talk to you guys about what that really means. It's more than just eyes and ears. The second thing I want to talk about is video being cost effective. Why is it cost effective as far as advertising, especially online? And then the third thing is the amount of content that one video provides, astronomical. And I'm going to go over each thing individually. First thing, video is able to give you sensory input. So sensory input would be like, eyes, ears, mouth, nose, the, the five senses that we're able to experience. So video has visual in addition to auditory. So we can see things, we can watch images in motion, we can hear it, we can hear the audio. Um, another element that we don't really think about, or at least we completely glaze over, is uh, vestibular input or the input of the actual experience from you as a person looking at an image, right? Or a movie image. So there was a movie called Hardcore Henry, came out in 2016, I believe. It was a movie that was created to be first person. So kind of like a gun game or one of those um, first person shooter games. The main character was running throughout the movie doing the jumps, doing the flips, getting out the gun. And I got motion sickness <laughs> very quickly. I, I watched it in 3D. So like 15 to $17 out the door. <laughs> right off the bat, I got so sick. And actually for a few days, I was so disoriented. But that's what that video had done for me. All right, I was sitting in a theater watching a movie all of a sudden, I just felt dizzy. Um, another, <laughs> another way that you could experience video, at least your physical being, experiencing a video are jump scares. <laughs> so you're watching a video, you think it's completely innocent, and all of a sudden, a woman with a bloody face comes out at you, or a spider jumps at you, and you jump back. You freak out, and you're like, what the hell happened? Um, so that is another thing that video has the ability to do. It's not just visual, it's auditory, and then it awakens the different senses. So the sensation of feeling things that stimulate us, right? Video has the ability to do that. So more than just seeing and listening, you have the sensations, feelings, um, whether it be sickness or warmth. You can feel warmth watching a video. Those are the things that I'm talking about. And you don't need a red camera, you know, you don't need the, the hottest Sony 7 camera. All you would really need is this thing right here, a phone. I've seen plenty of TikToks where I've cried, thought it was so sweet, you know, and they've edited it on their phone. So everybody has the ability to create video, 
And the number one reason why I think video is amazing is that it makes us feel things. We have that sensory input. So the second thing that I want to talk about as first video is how cost effective it is. Okay. You don't have to hire Michael Bay. You don't have to hire George Lucas. All you would really need is your phone. Okay. Depending on how much your phone bill is, or if you've paid it off, you know, you can always take the data, put it into your phone, or if you have Wi-Fi, take the data, upload it to a cloud. And now you have content, you have video content. So you can do it yourself. You can hire a videographer. You know, if you decide to do it that way, if your brand requires you to hire a videographer, so be it. Amazing. That's great. Um, as far as the cost effect, uh, cost effectiveness on the ad side, uh, that's really interesting. On the Facebook platform, Instagram platform, um, even Google, YouTube, if you're on TikTok, video has the ability to collect data more data than your normal text ad or picture ad so i'm just going to focus on the facebook and instagram side but what is super amazing about running video ads is not only do you get the normal engagement click through landing page view type of data but you also get the viewership data as well. And that can be retargeted. So let's say for instance, right? We set out a 30 second ad, really good 30 second ad. In the very beginning of the ad, you have the ability to control who watches and who doesn't watch. Hey, if this video applies to you, keep watching this video. Or um, if this doesn't apply to you, keep scrolling. That is actually a very powerful way for you to be able to disqualify whoever's watching your video. So let's say they're not the target demographic, right? They are not a female looking for comfortable high heels. If you're not, keep scrolling. And if you are, keep watching and this is how you do it. That isn't purely because that's the hottest thing. I mean, it is, it's trending, that form of of producing is trending but the reason why it works is because it's cost effective and you aren't retargeting anybody who wouldn't other otherwise be in your demographic so that's what i really like about the cost effectiveness not only can you produce it at home with your iphone or your android but you can also retarget people who are already consuming the content and you can pre-qualify or disqualify rather the people who are watching Right, so video being cost effective. I love it near and dear to my heart. The third thing that I love about video is the fact that you can create multiple pieces of content for one video, okay? Um, if you know me, you know I like Gary V. John likes Gary V. We love Gary V. Gary V is the future, right? He always talks about creating um, pieces of content that you can upcycle. And from video, you have the potential to create multiple, multiple forms. So that video can be transcribed, turned into text, and become an article next to your video. Uh, something that you can do with your videos that we do is we clip them. We clip our videos so that it can become smaller chunks. So even though I'm talking about three reasons why video is the ultimate form of content, these segments can be clipped, chopped up into different parts so that you don't have to watch the whole 15 minutes of me just talking. Um, another thing that you can do with video is turn it into a podcast. So we always mention it's nice to see your eyes and ears. Not only are you seeing me visually, but there's going to be a different group of people who are going to be listening to me. All right, they might be driving somewhere, on vacation, commuting, getting a coffee. Um, you are not limited to just watching me on a screen or sitting down and having your phone out. You can listen to me talk, that's wonderful. Other things that you can do is turn goofy faces into a GIF. GIF. We're not gonna get into it in this video slash podcast, uh, but that's something that you can potentially do as well. Or, Let's say I'm in the middle of the screen, right? I am taking up a landscape width and height. If we make it a 16 by nine and we clip that, I'm a TikTok slash Insta story. 
it's great. It's wonderful. So if we just had the bars here and let's say I had my editor Alex clip this and turn it into a 16 by nine. Now I'm an Insta story. I'm a Snapchat. I'm a LinkedIn story. I'm a Facebook story. Just from this one piece of content, you can produce four to five different story pieces. Mind blown. And then ultimately we can put this video slash podcast onto our website. That's two more pieces of content minimum on our website. So lots of things that you can do with video. I love video because it's cost effective. There's a lot of sensory input and basically anyone with a camera can do it. I hope you guys got a lot out of this. I can rave on and on and on about video um, and going into the month of January. So I've got all of December going to the month of January. What I challenge you guys to do is start to create video at least, at least once a week for five minutes. Even if it's just you rambling, talking, you do a live, or you just simply roll from your camera, just do it. Give yourself some practice. I myself am a little apprehensive when it comes to being in front of the camera. You know, I'm always behind the camera, but getting in front of the camera, actually talking, um, sharing your expertise, th these are things that you need to be doing to be seen just in general. You know, brand awareness starts with awareness. They have to know, they have to see, and they have to be able to understand what we're talking about. So I will leave you with that this month, this month of December. Right now it's November 30th, but this month of December, make one video once a week for five minutes. You're going to thank yourself. And then by the time January rolls around, you already have four pieces of content. All right. Okay, guys, I will talk to you guys soon. I'm going to be here again next week. So stay tuned. See ya.